Welcome survivors to Mikey's Gaming Oasis. In this episode, we're gonna go over the Shastasaurus, how to tame it and what their abilities are. The Shastasaurus is the newest addition to Ark Survival Ascended official servers and can only be found on the center map. To tame this creature, you will need a dolphin, flippers, air tank, as well as extraordinary kibble and a scythe. Depending on the level of the Shastasaurus you are attempting to tame, I highly recommend bringing additional dolphins to increase the time given to you to complete the mini game that you will see in this video to tame the Shastasaurus. As always, please leave a comment below on your experiences taming this beautiful creature to help your fellow survivors. Without further ado, let's get started. Well, we have found our Shastasaurus. Let's take a look at with our trusty tech binos on what the level is. You have to get extremely close to these to be able to determine the, le the level I learned. Now, when you're doing this, you want to be careful not to mesh in. We have a level 140 female here. So we will start the taming process in just a moment. In this example, you are going to see that I am using only one dolphin. Okay. This is going to illustrate how quickly the game goes by with only one dolphin. If you look at the indicator around the leeches, how quickly that's going down. What you're going to do is you're going to get in the water, you're going to grab your scythe, and you're going to go up, and you're going to strike those leeches. You want to strike them at just the right time with those pulsing lights going in, constricting on it. Okay. Don't worry if you hit the Shastasaurus. It's okay as long as you get all three leeches every time. If you miss the leeches, your taming effectiveness will go down. Now, this is on two times, and with this one feed, we got a tame, uh, a taming of 3.3%, which tells me that I'm gonna need approximately 30 extraordinary kibble to tame this 140 on two times. Keep that in mind. A 140 took 30 extraordinary kibble on two times, which means it'll take 60, possibly more, on one time. I'm going to speed this process up because we're what we're going to do is we're going to wait for it to come back to us and follow us, and then we're going to try and keep it as near the surface as possible and as far away from the edges as possible so that none of the leeches end up behind the barrier. After this round. We will then show you what the timing looks like with multiple dolphins with us. As you see in this round, as soon as I clear off the leeches, I swim immediately to the mouth and I wait for the indicator to tell me to feed it by pressing E. Ensure that you have your kibble in the last slot of your hot bar for a, the passive tame feeds. That is key. Always have that in that slot. Okay, survivors. My tribe member, Ground Pounder, has decided to bring us two additional dolphins to see if the number of dolphins affects the time allotted for the minigame. So for this round, I am going to be using three dolphins for this taming. Let's sit back and see the difference. As you can already see, the timer on the leeches is going down slower with having the additional dolphins. It's not a great improvement, but it is an improvement which gives us time to line up properly to be able to strike at these leeches.
as you saw survivors in that last round i missed the last leech so here we go again as you can see the timer's still moving a lot slower than it was previously which gives me time to get to the leeches now it's just a matter of getting the timing right on striking them As you can see, it's quite difficult to get that positioning correct. But we do have that additional time allotted with the additional dolphins, which gives us time to work the problem. All three are struck. Now I'm gonna run over to the mouth of the Shastasaurus and give him, uh, give her a little treat. Alrighty, survivors, and here is the last round of feeding to tame our 140 Shastasaurus. I did miss a couple of rounds where I got, I allowed the Shastasaurus to be too close to the edge of the world, and the leeches were behind the wall, so I could not get them. Now, if you can't get the leeches, don't worry too much about dropping that taming effectiveness. It will depend on how many of the leeches you take off how much will be taken how much of that taming effectiveness will be lost if you don't get a single leech off your taming effectiveness will tank you're based off the happiness bar on the shastasaurus that you see right here that green bar now if you get two or even just one it doesn't it reduces your taming effectiveness but not to the extent of missing them all as always, it's best to just try and get them all in that one go so you don't drop any taming effectiveness. Here we go with our last leech. If I can hit it, apparently I have really bad aim. There we go. And our last feeding. One, two, three, E. And we now have a Shastasaurus all to ourselves. Next, we will go over the saddle and the abilities of the Shastasaurus. Congratulations, Survivor. You have tamed your first Shastasaurus. To be able to use the saddle for the Shastasaurus, you will need either a blueprint or be at level 100 and access to a tech replicator. The primitive version of this saddle costs 200 cementing paste, 150 electronics, 250 silica pearls, and 300, 350 crystal, and 100 metal ingots. As you can see, it may not be the fastest creature in the sea, but it does have many abilities, as well as the ability to carry stuff for you. The one thing you cannot put in this saddle is a cryo fridge. Unfortunately, you can put containers, carry some of your medium-sized dinos, everything up to a Rex we've been able to fit in there, as well as fridges. Keep in mind, when you go to cryo this tame, you must remove your structures or they will be lost. The first ability we're gonna talk about is the periscope. As you can see, you can use it above water and below water, as well as zoom in and out, much like your tech binos. Unfortunately, it does not identify creatures, but it is very useful. Now, the next one is the sonar. The sonar will let you know when there are creatures around. It, it is a passive ability that does not necessarily affect the creatures around you. You also have the torpedo, which is an explosive device, and you have the pulse, which has a knockback on creatures that are around you, knocks them back approximately 35 meters. The next ability we will talk about is the flashbang. Now the flashbang is just like a normal flashbang in the real world, it's gonna push everything back and disorient them from anywhere from six to 10 seconds, depending on the way of the creature. Now keep in mind, this creature does not fit through a behe gate and you must have a deep, if you're gonna keep it in your pen, you must have a fairly deep pen. Otherwise, it will not be able to go in there and the only way to get it in and out of that pen would be to have it cryoed and uncryoed. As I said before, 
please ensure you remove your structures first. I hope this video was informative and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.